Okay, so this is a talk aloud of how to design the uh, enclosure for the gamepad. Uh, this is different than a tutorial in so much that uh, the goal of this is for you not to follow kind of step by step and dimension by dimension of what I designed here, um, but rather to provide a pathway um, of a method for creating a, uh, a 3D printable enclosure. Uh, so what I outline here is going to be based on my PCB and kind of my particular specifications. Um, but the tools and processes that I use um, are going to be helpful uh, as you work out your own form and shape. And so I'm going to kind of get started off in Easy EDA um, with my two PCBs. So I have my, my top PCB with all of my buttons, uh, and then I have my bottom PCB with my potentiometers and all of my circuitry. Um, and I need to be able to get uh, 3D files out of these. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to go up to File, Export, and Export as a 3D Model. Oops, that's my bottom. And then I'm going to do the same for my top. Okay, now that I have those two files, I'm going to go find them on my desktop and unzip them. Uh, now in Fusion, I need to bring these in. Um, I also want to kind of be sensitive about the overall size because those 3D models may not represent a true one-to-one -one scale. Uh, and so just for reference, I'm going to click on the production tab. And I see that's 125 millimeters by 60 millimeters. Um, cool. So let's go ahead and in Fusion, um, I'm going to get a new sketch here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this as uh, GamePad, and this is version four of this. Um, and we're going to insert a mesh. And let's go find that bottom PCB. Okay, I'm going to move to center and move to ground. And yeah, that'll be just fine there. Uh, now, I have a, a firm belief that this is actually not in at the correct scale. Um, and so to kind of test that, I'm going to see if uh, that is in fact. So I'm going to draw a 125 by 60 millimeter rectangle, uh, and we're going to see what we end up with. So I'm going to turn this body off for just a quick moment. I'm going to create a rectangle on this surface. Uh, it's going to be a center rectangle construction. Uh, and what did I say, 125 by 60? Great. OK. So let's see, 160. No, 120. Sorry, 60 by 125. Yeah, I already can see that I am uh, not a. Not really going to be there. You see how much larger that is. Um, that's because this does not come in at the right scale. Um, and so what we're going to do uh, is we're going to scale this. Uh, and I believe the right scale is 0.254. Uh, and that's because there's a units exchange. There's 2.54 centimeters for every inch. Uh, and I think that's we're just having a, a conversion issue. But we can see that that sketch now kind of perfectly lines up with that outline. Um, so that brings that in just fine. Okay, um, so at this point then, um, let's go ahead and bring in the other one. So we're going to insert, and turn that off for now. Insert a mesh. And let's go find the top PCB. And again, we're going to center, move to ground, click OK. We know that that's going to need to scale the exact same way. By a factor of 0.254. Okay. So now we have these two models. Um, we need to arrange them to the correct height. And so I'm going to take this model and actually bring it all the way to the ground. 
And I kind of want to make these uh, as collinear as possible. I'm actually going to make them kind of intersect with each other. Um, so then I can kind of offset them by the, uh, the correct distance. So. So now they are kind of coinciding with each other. Uh, and then I'm just going to take a set of calipers on my real board, uh, and I'm going to determine the offset that they need to be moved. So it appears that I am 16 millimeters above. And so I'm going to take you, you, I'm going to raise this. That seems to make sense. I've got my joysticks kind of protruding up through this one. Uh, I know these header pins look a little bit wonky, and that's just kind of an artifact of how we created the board. Um, but that's that kind of gives us a representation of what I have in real life. Again, yours will look different because you designed a different board uh, based on probably a different game control than I did. So mine's kind of a hybrid model between the Nintendo Switch Pro controller and the Xbox 360 controller. Um, I'm going to hide these for now. Um, because now I need to bring in reference images of the actual 3D geometry of the board, of the controllers that I'm pulling my inspiration from. Um, and so I'm kind of done with this. Um, I've got two references that I'm going to be pulling from. I'm using dimensions.com uh, to actually pull the dimensions of the controller. Um, I'm also referencing this uh, video tutorial that is all about how to design an Xbox Series X controller. Uh, the process outlined in this uh, tutorial uh, is what we'll be using and what I've kind of gotten inspiration from uh, and so this is linked and so you may want to reference it as well uh, We don't do all the steps that he does because he's just looking at a um, just a 3d model and not for actual production So there are some modifications that we're making to this, but there's a lot of good tips and tools um, It's a little bit long. There's several several parts to it um, But we'll just be cherry-picking from it and you'll see me reference it in this uh, talk aloud anyway so as I mentioned um, so I'm going to be pulling from the Xbox controller, uh, specifically the Xbox 360 controller. And so uh, what I'm going to be doing is taking a series of screenshots, one from each of these views. And I'll be referencing these uh, uh, these geometries in just a moment. So back here, I'm going to insert a canvas, and I'm going to go grab that first screenshot that I pulled, and just place it on this interface. Yep, that looks good. Um, and we want to do a reference um, for the correct size of this. So I'm going to right click and click calibrate. Uh, and according to this, uh, it should be 105 millimeters from kind of this top edge to this bottom edge. Uh, now one thing I'm going to do with this, it should be easier if I went and cropped this. So I'm actually going to kind of back out of this. Uh, and I'm going to crop those images just to make it a little bit easier to do the calibration step uh, on this. So, I'll go to my desktop. And I'm going to bring this kind of box just down far enough. the edges here. Cool. This is going to be a little bit easier. Not exactly necessary, but it'll make things a little bit more precise with my particular design. And this type of thing that you'll see, it's kind of the difference between tutorial and talk aloud. Um, is in a talk aloud, I probably will make mistakes and go back and change them. That's just part of the process. 
as I kind of figure this out as I go along. Okay, so let's try that again. So I'm going to insert the canvas. And now to some extent, I can choose the very top point, the very bottom point, and we'll see that that should be 105 millimeters. Uh, and we will kind of square this up ultimately against uh, my, uh, my PCB. At the end of the day, it's not important that it matches the dimensions of the controller exactly, um, but rather that it's inspired from them and that it matches the dimensions of your PCB uh, as closely as one can. And so if I bring in my PCB, I can kind of see that ultimately things will kind of line up well there. Um, so that means I've got a good start here. Okay, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, insert another canvas. see that our orientation is kind of a little bit wonky uh, and so we're going to uh, rotate that down so let's this. Right, so now that's kind of in the right orientation we'll still kind of have to shift it around just a little bit um, is 61.3 millimeters tall. Double check. And this is where we can kind of begin to look to see if this makes sense. Will our controls fit in here? You can see it's getting kind of a little bit close in here. Um, I think we'll be able to uh, adjust for that when the, the time comes. I'm just going to move these back just a bit. I think that's got a more comfortable angle. Yeah, so we'll need to leave some additional thickness here. We'll change these curves, but again, so I think we're in the right uh, ballpark. Okay, I'm going to bring in one more view. And this last view. It's going to be here. I'm going to make sure it's oriented correctly. So. Yep. Oh, okay. That's better. I was looking weird. Uh, and you can see here that it's again 154 millimeters wide. see in 3D space how all of that is supposed to be playing out. Okay. So we're going to have these bodies for now. Uh, and let's go ahead and 
save up since we've done quite a bit of work here. Okay. So I'm going to come back to this top view. I'm going to turn off these additional sketches now. We'll reference these a little bit later on. Um, but as I mentioned, we're going to kind of reference this. Uh, and we can see that we're going to be creating a free form. Uh, and so we're going to watch a little bit of this and kind of see Otsu. some of the first we'll exchanges. I go to create and I select on clean. Right? And so what I'll do is I'm going to create. Create a plane um, on this face. Sorry, on this planar face. So I'm working on this planar face, as he can mention. So I would select on this, and then the origin point of this plane should be created, I would say, from here. And let's just take it upward this way. Right? Cool. And we're just going to kind of pick an arbitrary spot to start working. And we'll be able to adjust pretty much all of this. But this is just to get us started. So we have a four-faced plane, and that's good for us. I will. So four-faced. So we've got two length and two wide. Good. We'll bring this closer just a little bit, and let's see. Um, drag this down just a little bit. It used to be changed, but we just do this. And then I select on OK. Right. At this point, I click on Modify. Select all of the planes created, and just move them up um, this way. Okay. Well, it seems like we're just kind of looking for this kind of square-ish thing. So. Let me bring this in a little bit here. Okay. Lock down. Kind of raise it up a little bit to uh, to match. Cool. All right. So now we have created the basics of what we want to do today, and then the next thing is just to draw and trace out the canvas to cover up every part that we have. So at this point. We know that the pad is symmetrical to each other, that is, um, this half of the pad is the same as this half of the pad, that's excluding the buttons that we have. So what we need to do is to make sure that um, whatever we create is symmetrical on both sides. And to achieve that, we select on mirror internal uh, symmetry here. And what this does for us is that it creates a symmetry line automatically. So it creates a symmetrical line for us here that allows every action we make on this side or on this side to be replicated on the other side. So I'll select on this face and this face as the two symmetrical faces. And then you notice this green line is our symmetrical line or mirror line. And then I click on OK. All right. OK, so we definitely want some symmetry. For the symmetry, and we want to internal, and so we want this face and this face to be symmetrical. We know that the pad is symmetrical to each other, that is, um, okay. this half of the pad is the same as this half of the pad, that's excluding the buttons that we have. So what we need to do is to make sure that um, whatever we create is symmetrical on both sides. And to achieve that, we select on mirror internal uh, symmetry here. And what this does for us is that it creates okay. a symmetry line automatically. So it creates a symmetrical line for us here that allows every action we make on this side or on this side to be replicated on the other side. So I'll select on this face and this face as two mm -hmm. symmetrical faces. And then you notice this green line is our symmetrical line or mirror line. And then I click on OK. All right. There it goes. Okay, just had to cancel and try it again. Okay, so now whatever I do on this side is going to happen over on this side. At this point, we would go ahead to create the other parts of uh, this plane. Okay, I would right click, sorry, I would double click on this line, go back to modify, hold on to my hold on it. Okay, so at this point, we're going to get to kind of play out. Uh, Uh, we're going to kind of begin to duplicate this shape over and over again. Uh, and so we do that by uh, just hold the alternate key. Uh, and so on a Mac, that's going to be the option key. On a PC, it's probably the alt key. Uh, and we're going to kind of create kind of multiple forms, you know, trying to work our way through this geometry 
like this as we can. So we kind of key on my keyboard, the alt key on my keyboard, and select yeah. on one of these um, controls here. But and here I'm going to select on this planar control and, and then just drag. So I'll do this. You see one. following kind of this rough drop, shape click here. again, two, drop click again, three, drop click again, four. All right. So with this, I can click, and then I will change my workspace view into a box view, which we can see here, display mode. Um, the shortcut for that is alternate and one using your windows, and this is just for us to be able to have um, better understanding of the. Okay. So over here. Display mode. And here we can kind of kind of see this, this box view versus kind of this smooth view. And so again, this is going to kind of help us kind of define these lines a little bit kind of more uh, discreetly, and then overall kind of see how the program is going to ultimately smooth them out for us. So this box view can be helpful just for kind of getting these lines really dialed in. So we can see there's some different uh, adjustments we need to make. I'm also probably going to flatten this out a little bit. I don't know if I really like these big bulgy shoulders here. Um, so I'll kind of take, again, inspiration from it, but probably not follow it exactly. These lines have been used um, in this work. I'll try this. I can drag this up or drag it down. You notice that whatever. Yeah. So here we can see that, like, you know, this line. All right, we're going to kind of modify. And then we should be able to kind of bring it up. You can see that whatever we do, on that side, it's going to get muted on the other side as well. So I'm actually going to kind of make these lines a little bit shallower. I don't know if I want them as curvy as the uh, as the lines on the real Xbox controller are. Uh, and this I can go down and add a little bit more. Without changing the MDK, I've been replicated on the other side. Um, so for now, what I'll do is I'll select on this point and drag it out this way. I'll select on this also, drag out what? Yep. So we can kind of again begin to match that a little bit. There we go. So you can kind of see how that's coming into play. And again, you can always kind of see how that's going to play out when we smooth out view a little bit. Alright, so I'll select on this, this point, get it here, this get it, and drag, yep. I'll select on this. And what he's doing here is we're actually kind of begin to follow the contours of the controller. What I'm doing right now is just based on the visual implementation. It's going to be able to make these lines kind of contour and bulge a little bit, just like they would in the, uh, the real geometry. So here, this is kind of going like straight down. That's not really how that would work. Uh, you know, we would see that, you know, these lines. I'm going to turn off my snap to grid. Let's see if that gives me a little bit more control. There we go. And so here I'm just trying to make kind of a smoother transition of these points. And kind of imagining the contours that my hands would follow. these lines. There's a bit of this that's kind of by feel. You get a that's your kind of own artistic flair, but you can kind of see how we're beginning to kind of smooth these curves out just a little bit. If you're not doing this to the mouse, I highly suggest that you get one. It's kind of a little difficult to do on the touchpad. Okay, so you can see how that, that curvature is beginning to build out. Okay. So, um, let's make this drag it upward. Okay, so with this, we would select on these two lines, right? And do the same process again. I select an alternate key, select on this, drag. Okay. We're going to drag, bring drag it down. this geometry drop, down a few drag times. Drag again. So, bring it down. Um, two, drag this way. Since um this is three, okay. and again, this is just going to be based on kind of what you see. So I'm holding Option key. I'm just following this down. Like 
that's the right one. And then similarly, we'll begin to uh, try to conform this. Look at the the flow of this line, and make these kind of similarly. Keep that same flow going through. Too large, so what I can do is to select on this line to scale it in and move it this way. Then you click on alternate again, drag and um, bring it this way. All right, so this is kind of tricky. I would scale it down also using this line here, just drag it in a little bit. And all right, I bring it this way. Okay, I will try to arrange this just at this point. Um, select on this vertex, this vertex. Select on this vertex, bring it this way, select on this. I select on this vertex, drag somewhat this way. Select on this vertex, drag some this way. All right, so with this, the next thing to do would be for me to extrude these lines. So what I'll do is I'll select on this first line and select on this. I would also select on the vertex here. All right, um, because I noticed that sometimes meshes together, but in terms of layout, we don't know. Okay. So we're going to kind of drag this down from the center here using the same approach that we did for the others. So we grab these guys like this, and then So, just kind of filling out this because we'll ultimately kind of be seaming these all together. Okay, so it's kind of nice. All right, so I drag this down a little bit. Just to all of these lines here. So I'll select one, two, three, four, holding down my control key. Go to my modify, then click on my alternate, click on this planar face, and drag it sideways. Mm -hmm. All right, so I haven't dragged it sideways, I do that again, second time. Great. And then at this point, what we will need to do is to merge or weld vertices. So we know that this. Yeah, so we're going to kind of drag these out two times, and then we're going to weld these lines together. So let's start this one, this one, this one, this one, and then again, hold down my option key, bring it out, and then one more time. Okay, and then we're going to weld these points and vertices. I go to modify and go over to weld vertices. All right, select on this vertices and this, I weld it together. I'll notice that the same thing is done here. All right, so then I would select on this vertices and. Yeah. So, look over here. Modify, we'll go to little vertices in here. We'll just select the lines that we want to merge together. Hmm. That's not exactly what I wanted, is it? This looks like I have the wrong number of. lines here. So, that's okay. We'll just modify that. You know, I only have three here. I see. Okay. So I'm just going to bring this line down a little bit. This line. Okay, and then I can step on these things. Hold my option. Out. And out. Okay, now I've got the right number of vertices to weld. And again, 
you want to kind of come through and adjust these lines out. You can see how they're kind of a little crooked. So we just want to adjust those just to suit our form that we're looking for. Ultimately, we don't want there to be you know, too much disparity. We want these lines to kind of cleanly flow in both directions. Let's go ahead and say that we've done quite a bit of work. This, I'll tell it on. So what is good? I'm just going to do a whole bunch of work. So I want my six plane. All right, so it's okay. So let's just say 35 millimeters um, to look some thing to be thickened. Yeah. This out. Right. For now, it's just a face. But what we want is solid. So I go to modify and go over to thicken. So I want my six plane body, which is this, to be thickened. Um, we have the options of making our ticking to be sharp, but I do not want sharp, or we do not want sharp, so we want to have soft, and direction is normal, so we increase the thickness of our plane to, okay, that's weird, <laughs> 35 millimeters, and... Okay, so at this point then, modify, and we want to thicken, we do want that, we do want soft, we do want normal, uh, and then we're going to figure out how Pick to make this. Right, so we're going to have this decision to make. And, and so I'm going to bring in a little bit to kind of help make that decision. Uh, and I can see ultimately that if I grab my calipers. I've got about 35 millimeters. I'm going to thicken to about that much, about 35. So we should be able to ultimately kind of put things in. Actually, I'm going to maybe go 37, just give it a little bit of a buffer room. Just based on the thickness of my object. Okay, so if I go here, right here, yeah, that's looking better. We can kind of see just some things barely beginning to kind of peek out of there. Okay. 
if 35 is we click on okay right i can select on all of this the whole body we just created move what we have let's see okay not based on this so let's just say 35 millimeters um to look something similar to what we have here okay so the five millimeters that's good we click on okay right i can select on all of this the whole body we just created move and take it up um, just a little bit yeah and so this looks really blocky um but if we come over to our utilities display mode we can actually see that it's actually quite nice and we do see some kind of parts of my pcb poking out here um and so we are going to want to address that uh, and so we'll do that as in our next step um, as we begin to kind of continue working on this i'm going to change my opacity just a little bit so you can see how kind of close things are okay i think actually if we Variety of angles just to make sure I'm in the ballpark. Yep, so it does look like that will fit inside, as at least as we move on to the next part. Okay. Let's see. All right, so it's okay this way here. All right, and I would create um, this and call this of this so that it, it takes you just about three seconds to go on the button. Hi guys. All right. So that kind of gives us our first part. Okay. Again, I'm gonna kind of save up. Now we need to kind of begin making this some is more adjustments. In today's video, we are going to be modifying our freeform sculpts, which is so yeah. So we need some additional freeform sculpting. So we just create copy, just and we go over to the canvas. We dealt with the top plane ready. So what we need to do now is to build this. This is gonna add some additional. Uh, dimensionality because uh, we know that in order to make this ergonomic we've got to kind of be able to bring all this stuff down um, and so this, let me bring this guy up a little bit more yeah. you can see how it's going to begin to curve down like this. So we're going to kind of work through this tutorial and kind of figure out how to begin to work that, uh, that geometry down a little bit better. I'm change that opacity to 90%. I still want to be able to see my controller in there, um, just to make sure I'm not kind of designing something that isn't going to fit my PCB. The side plane. I go to right view, you know what we have here. It's going to be a little bit tricky, um, probably a little bit long also, but I'll try not to make it so. All right, so the first thing is that we'll do, we're just going to try to get this uh, called shape here. So I go over to modify, and I would select on this part of this. Let's see, we select on it this way. And let's see what we're picking. I also want to pick this. Yes. I should select them all. I have no idea why it's doing this. Oh, okay, I know what's going on. So my filter is switched off, so I go to select. Um, selection filter, select true, which means that it's able to select the vertices on the other side also. So um, modify, I select on all of this, this way. All right, and then I will drag these downwards. Yeah, I'm okay. um, the only bother that is looking weird. Yeah, so looks like we can... Um and look at it from this side. We select uh, this part. We got to modify. Yeah. And what he's saying is, is that we can actually begin to warp this shape down and out. We can rotate it a little bit. So again, we're going to kind of take inspiration from this controller. We don't have to be a slave to it, but we just want to make sure that we're designing something that fits our enclosure and seems like it's going to make sense for the way that we are trying to work with this particular controller. So that slope, kind of as we explore, will kind of be something that we'll definitely be testing out with our hands. See, I'm kind of trying to be sensitive about these components up here and down here. 
as I work my way through. Let's go on. And another important bit is just going to be constantly kind of checking your work from a variety of angles, just making sure that, that it just makes sense. So you can see we're just clicking on whole sections of this and we're able to kind of rotate and move to kind of shape it to the, uh, the overall desired form that we're looking for. Careful about kind of encroaching too much on the board. You want to make sure you leave a, a good amount of space so that the board will fit in without any significant issues. And again, we can kind of constantly check this against our canvases. So that's pretty good. And again, this is something you'll probably spend quite a bit of time on, just trying to get it to, to feel right. Okay. And at some point you're going to kind of finish all your, your primping and you're going to feel really good about it. Okay. You want to make 
make sure that we've got plenty of clearance. Okay. So, I'm going to finish the form. Well, looks like we've got some good plans here. Um, so a couple things that we need to do now uh, is we need to hollow this out. Uh, so we need to shell it, uh, and then we need to split it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go in and say shell. Uh, we need to choose a thickness. I'm going to start with 2 millimeters uh, and see how that looks. And again, we want to make sure that don't have anything that's colliding unnecessarily with that. Looks okay. Oh, this happens too, so I like literally just have like my mouse is like stuck. So I'm gonna unplug my mouse. Unplug my mouse back in. Still stuck. I'm going to save. I'm going to open it for the time. I'm going to click. 
close this design. Sometimes my mouse just gets stuck in that orbit view. So I just have to reopen the file. Cool. Okay, uh, and then we just split this. Um, and so to do that, it's going to be a little wonky. Um, I'll show you kind of how it works. So the body is going to turn off all of this. Um, and we're going to create a new sketch on this plane. Uh, we have a rectangle, a center rectangle. We're just going to create a really big rectangle. Um, and we're going to extrude it up just one millimeter. Okay, we'll bring back our body. Uh, and what we want to do uh, is we want to rotate and move this rectangle so it's kind of splitting along a nice even line. This is best of a line as we can make. Uh, so I'm going to choose this uh, and I'm going to rotate it. So it's going to be kind of some of the thicker portions of this body here. So you can kind of see how where it's going to essentially split that body in half. Uh, and then we'll come over here to the split body. We want to split that body. The splitting tool is here. Uh, and if we click OK, then what we should find uh, is that. We now have two halves of our enclosure. So then we've got the bottom. And this is going to allow us to inspect a little bit more, make sure that everything has plenty of room. And we've got the top. And again, we'll just inspect around. Make sure everything's got enough room. So we need to modify these so that we can actually have our controls come straight through it. Um, but this is a, a good start to begin with. Okay. At this point, we need to kind of think through kind of the openings uh, that we need to make for all of our controls. Uh, and so for that, we're going to actually take off some of this. To open because we're going to be kind of tracing on top of them. And let's create another sketch. Uh, and so, with this sketch in mind, um, we're going to begin to kind of draw literally on top of our layer here circle. I think I'm going to open this up wider than I need it to be. And same thing for these buttons. The most important part is just kind of try to be mostly consistent with we're trying to accomplish. We will be kind of 3D printing caps to put on these buttons. So be thoughtful about the dimensions that you choose for this. This is my D-pad, so this is going to be a little bit different. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, so at this point then, I'm actually just gonna extrude all of these faces. Um, probably just a ridiculous amount, honestly. I know that looks silly. Um, but uh, what I can then use that as, I can go here, I'm gonna rename this bottom. I can now see how all those are going to be intersecting with that, uh, that top face there. Uh, and so if I go to combine, and I can say there's my target body, uh, and then literally here are my tool bodies. Uh, I don't really want to keep the tools. I do want to cut. Okay, so now, when I bring in, I can see, I can see now, all of those are available to me. We'll talk about shoulder buttons in just a second, but that's, that's now available to me. Um, I'm gonna do, again, just a little bit of additional kind of work here. Um, I want to kind of open this up a little bit so, again, our joystick has a little bit more room to breathe. And so I'm going to select it, and I'm going to select this edge. I'm going to fill it out a little bit. So I don't know how much it's going to let me fill it. Ooh, a lot, maybe. That's kind of cool. just to kind of open up that edge a little bit more so that joystick has room to kind of rock around and move about. And so I'm gonna kind of give all these edges a little bit of a fill. Not too much on these. just because these are going to be green parts, not having a super hard edge on these would be beneficial. So we'll fill it. And I'll probably make one more maybe half a millimeter. There we go. Just to give them a nice rounded edge. Okay. So we're going to work on these shoulder buttons next. So I'm going to kind of take this for now. We're going to move a new sketch on this face. Here, go rectangle, center rectangle. what I think is going to be the shoulder button, 4 by 15. Apparently I need to extrude them much more. Some shoulder buttons that will go through an interface 
with those. Save up. Again, I'm going to want to tweak this a little bit. Um, possibly think about kind of raising in some geometry that's going to hold this into place. Uh, looks pretty tight. Um, but again, we'll want to think about maybe some supports to just be able to put it into place. Um, but at this point, then, we can uh, change the opacity back to 100. Okay. Maybe think about some appearances. So if we go into our render settings, um, being able to customize our control again, this is going to have you know an aesthetic element to it. And so if we go into plastic, you know, for mine I may think about. up to controller um, and then obviously you know we can do some renders uh, so what's nice is for education use um, we can actually render these uh, in the cloud and um, so you'll want to do some renderings from a variety of angles um, but let's talk about how to get this into uh, a 3d printer so if we go back to design which is now we've got some lovely colors on it we'll go over to utilities over to make we don't want to send a 3D print utility, but we do want an STL. And you'll need to choose one face at a time. So this will be the bottom. So export the bottom as an STL. And then same thing with the top. We'll export the top as an STL. Um, then you've got your STLs that you can slice, send over to the 3D printers, um, check your fitment. You'll likely need to make some adjustments. Um, and so you know, please do so. Uh, and then you can start working on your surface finishing uh, and then 3D printing buttons to interface with your, uh, with your PCB. And that's it.